Today is May 23rd. On the 23rd of May of 1992, Italy's most prominent anti-mafia judge, Giovanni Falcone, his wife and three bodyguards are killed by a mafia clan with a half-ton bomb near Capacci, Sicily. His friends, our colleagues Paolo Barcellino, will be assassinated less than two months later, making 1992 a turning point in the history of Italian mafia prosecutions. Which mafia clan was responsible for these assassinations? Follow the link in the description of this video to submit your answers and win an amazing prize. Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Smart by the Second. My name is Dan Veldhuis and today I'm here with Niels. Hello Niels, how are you? I'm very well, how are you? I'm well also. So uh, we are very uh, glad that you can uh, uh, wanted to participate in this quiz. So could you uh, shortly introduce yourself? Yeah, so I am uh, Niels Berg, also known as The Mountain maybe. And um, yeah, as you can see, I'm currently uh, Candidate board of uh, WSG Abacus. Yeah, I am uh, very hyped about that. Very recognizable indeed. So, uh, what function do you hope to become uh, next year? Um, I am a candidate officer of internal affairs and educational affairs. Ah, and why did you want to really get those both functions? Uh? Well, um, of course, it's nice to uh, be uh, more important with two functions than uh, my fellow uh, candidate members. But I think there are also two very good functions with internal affairs and educational affairs. I think they uh, can be combined quite well indeed. So uh, today you're playing for uh, geography. Mm -hmm. So why geography? Um, because, well, I like the subject very much and I think uh, I'm pretty confident I can get a quite a good score. Ah, so you're going for the fourth round uh, mm -hmm. here. Ah, that's good to hear, I that's always so. what we want to see. So uh, then we can uh, start with the first round. Here we want five correct answers. Just like Wordle, WordLol has taken the world by storm. Instead of words, you have to guess countries based on their silhouette. In this round, nine silhouettes of countries. Here we will see the picture and the silhouette of a country and I will also say the capital of the country and then you have to say the corresponding Land. Mm -hmm. Land, country. So, capitals a bit in uh, your uh, expertise? Well, I, um, I play uh, World All quite a lot. I think I, uh, I can be pretty good at this. I usually get them first try, but... Um, right, let's see at the... Uh, let's look uh, at the options. We have... I think I know these outlines. I think Oops. I could draw them. Ah, that's good. So we have Kosovo, Laos, Nepal, Poland, Romania, Japan, Guyana, Iran, and Australia. All right. Good luck. First one. Thank you. Canberra. Uh, Australia. Warsaw. Poland. Pristina. Uh, Kosovo. Tokyo. Um, that's uh, Japan. Georgetown. Guyana, Kathmandu, Nepal, Bucharest, uh, Romania, Tehran, Iran, Vientiane, Laos. Stop the time. Stop the time. All right, are there five correct answers? There are ten. There are ten. That's confidence. All right, then we will check them. So first up it was Canberra, and this is indeed the capital of Australia. Next was uh, Warsaw, which is from Poland, Pristina, which is the capital of Kosovo, Tokyo corresponds to Japan, of course, Georgetown with Guyana, Kathmandu with Nepal, Bucharest with Romania, Tehran, Iran, and Vientiane, Laos. So that's all nine of them correct, which means you get another lifeline, so you have four of them. And uh, we can go right into round two. Very well done. A lot of Earth has already been claimed by a sovereign state, often even by multiple at the same time. Some territories of the Earth have not been claimed by any sovereign state, the largest of which is Mary Birdland. It is the most uh, remote part of Antarctica. 
In this round we will talk about territories that have been claimed. Nine colonies and their colonizers. You will uh, uh, see the uh, colonized country and I will tell you when it was colonized and you have to say by which country it was colonized. Does that okay. make sense? Right, so the colonizers, the, those are the options, are Great Britain, the Netherlands, Denmark, Italy, Spain, Russia, Portugal, Belgium, and France. Wait, wait up a moment. Am I supposed to see them uh, on the screen? No, I will Did say the country that was colonized. Then you have to say by who it was colonized. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, yeah. So this is a bit of geography mixed with history. Mm -hmm. So uh, I hope it works out. All right, so I will start talking. And if you think you already know the answer, then I uh, just uh, yell it and then I will continue to the next description. All right. All right, and we will start. Congo, colonized from 1876 until Belgium. 1960. Mexico, colonized from 50. Spain. Brazil, colonized from 50. Greenland, from 30. Denmark. Libya, colonized Italy. from... Italy. Suriname, colonized... Netherlands. Lebanon, colonized from 1920 Great until... Britain. India, colonized from 1858 until 1947. Um, that one's Great Britain. Alaska, colonized from... Russia. And France is Lebanon. Stop the time. So this is second round, so six correct answers. Uh, there, I think there are ten again. <laughs> oh, that would be uh, quite some feat. All right, then to checking the answers. First up was Congo, which is indeed uh, colonized by Belgium. Then Mexico, which corresponds to Spain. Brazil, Portugal. Greenland by Denmark, it's still part of the Kingdom of Denmark. Then. Libya was colonized by Italy, and Suriname was by the Netherlands, Lebanon by France, also uh, very well corrected, India by Great Britain, and lastly Alaska by Russia. So another perfect round, you're quite on a roll here, which means you also have five lifelines going into the third round, and still almost 250 seconds left, so a very uh, impressive score. Everybody dreams of living in a palace. It doesn't even have to be a Disney palace. There are so many beautiful palaces in the world. But sadly, we will probably never get to live in such a palace. Just like we will most never, uh, likely never get to spend our lives in an IKEA. Here are then nine cities in Europe that have at least one palace. Mm -hmm. I will tell you something about the city. And then you will have to say the corresponding city. All right. So the options are Edinburgh. Vienna, The Hague, Florence, Apeldoorn, London, Palermo, Berlin, and Paris. You think uh, another perfect round? Uh, Ooh, this one's possible? gonna this one's gonna be a little harder. I'm curious how well I do. All right, I wish you uh, the best of luck. Louis XIII built a simple hunting lodge on the site of the Palace of Versailles. In Paris. City. Once bought by stadtholder William III, great grandchild to Willem of Orange, Charlottenburg Palace was built at the end of the 17th century and was greatly expanded during the 18th century. It includes much lavish internal decoration in Baroque and Rococo styles. A large formal garden surrounded um, by woodland. Next. The Palazzo de Normani was the seat of the King of Sicily with the Hautefield dynasty. Palermo. Schönbrunn Palace was the main summer residence of the Habsburg rulers. The 1441 rule. Vienna. The Peace Palace is an international administrative building. It houses the International Court of the Justice. Hague. Kensington Palace is a royal residence set in Kensington Gardens. That's where residents of the Brit The Palace of Holyrood House is a commonly referred to as Holyrood Palace or Holyrood House. Queen Elizabeth II spends one week in residence at Edinburgh. The Palazzo Vecchio is now used Florence. as Florence. Um, stop the time. No switching around. So. There now needs to be seven correct answers. Um, let's put the one that I skipped at Berlin then. I'm afraid uh, that's or not possible that's anymore not after possible. you stop the time. Ooh. So that means you at least have one uh, incorrect answer. Mm, let's see. So do you want to use... Uh, I need to get seven correct? Yes. For every lifeline, one incorrect answer counts as a correct one. Let's 
let's use one lifeline. One lifeline will be used, so that also means 16 seconds will be subtracted from the clock. And then we can go to checking. First one, Louis XIII built a simple hunting lodge on the site of the Palace of Versailles in 1623 and replaced it with a small chateau in 1631. Louis XIV expanded the chateau into a palace. It was a favorite residence for both kings. This is indeed in Paris, so off to a good start. Once bought, uh, bought by stadtholder William III, the great grandchild to William of Orange, Palais at Lowe was inhabited by the Dutch royal family up until 1975. Nowadays it's a museum open to the public. This is in Apeldoorn, indeed. Charlottenburg Palace, uh, Palace Charlotte, uh, was built at the end of the 17th century and was greatly expanded during the 18th century. It includes much lavish internal decoration in Baroque and Rococo styles. A large formal garden surrounded by woodland was added behind the palace. This was Berlin, so the one you missed. Ah, yes. So this one will be uh, counted correct using the lifeline. The Palazzo de Normani, Normani was the seat of the kings of Sicily with the Hautefield dynasty and served afterwards as the main seat of power for the subsequent rulers of Sicily. Since 1946 it has been the seat of the Sicilian Regional Assembly. This was Palermo, so it's your fourth correct one. Schönbrunn Palace was the main summer residence of the Habsburg rulers. The 1441 Rome Rococo Palace is one of the most important architectural, cultural, historic monuments in the country. This is in Vienna indeed. The Peace Palace is an international law administrative building. It houses the International Court of Justice, the Permanent Court of uh, Arbitration and the Peace Palace Library. It's in our own Den Haag. Then, Kensington Palace is a royal residence set in Kensington Gardens. It has been a residence of the British royal family since the 17th century and is currently the official London residence of the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge. The Duke and Duchess of Gloucester. This is indeed London and this is also your seventh correct answer, so congratulations, you, you've uh, passed the third round. I still have two options, uh, questions left. The Palace of Holyrood House is of Holyrood House is commonly referred to as Holyrood Palace or Holyrood House. Queen Elizabeth II spends one week in residence at Holyrood House at the beginning of each summer, where she carries out a range of official engagements and ceremonies. This is in Edinburgh. And lastly, the Palazzo Vecchio is now used as a town hall. The building overtook the Piazza della Signoria, which holds a copy of Michelangelo's David statue, and the gallery of statues in the adjacent Locchia. Loggia de Lanzi, and this is Florence. So, it is a perfect round after all using your lifeline. So yes. this uh, means you also get another lifeline, which brings your total to five. Right. And now is the question, do you want to play the fourth round or not? You have a lot of time left, 170 seconds, and a lot of lifelines, five of them. I do. You do? Definitely. All right, then on to the final round. In 1991, after 69 years, the Soviet Union dissolved. 17 countries, of which 15, uh, 15 still exist, succeeded the Soviet Union. In this round, nine capitals of post-Soviet Union countries. I will say the capital, and you have to say the, uh, the country. Oh, uh, sorry, the other way around. Oh no, no, I, uh, I say the country, and you will say which capital belongs to it. All right. So the capitals are Ashgabat, Yerevan, Riga, Chisinau, Baku, Tashkent, Vilnius, Tbilisi, and Tallinn. Oh, this is definitely harder. I uh, I think I know most of them on the list. There are a few that I'm like uh, depends on what country you will name, but. Uh, I feel pretty confident and still. You still have the five lifelines left. So if you are quickly, you only need four of them uh, correct by yourself. So uh, let's oh. just get right into it. That won't be my strategy. <laughs> I'll go for the right answers. Sounds good. Uh, Lifunia. Can you say it again? Lifunia, Litouwen. Oh, Lithuania. Uh, uh, yeah, sorry. My bad. It's Vilnius. Uzbekistan. Uh, Ashgabat, Estonia, Tallinn, Georgia, uh, Tbilisi, Turkmenistan, Tashkent, Latvia, Riga, Moldova, Chisinau, Armenia, 
Yerevan, Azerbaijan, Baku, and I would like to switch my answers for uh, Ashgabat and Tashkent. You want to stop the time? Stop the time. And yeah. Yeah, you have plenty of time, so you could technically use all your five lifelines. There is no reason in saving them, so... Uh, no, that there's, def, there's, there's a lot of reason in saving them. <laughs> for the flex. Yes, uh, I'm, I'm very confident in every single one except uh, Ashgabat and Tashkent, which I know are two Central Asian countries, but I don't know which ones. But we'll see, maybe the switch was correct, maybe it wasn't. So, how many lifelines are you going to use? Zero. 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 Whew. That's risky. That's risky. All right, then. We'll go for it or we won't. <laughs> this is uh, some uh, high risk, low reward uh, play right here. Yes, that's what I'm all about. <laughs> all right, then we uh, start off by checking. Lithuania was indeed Vilnius. Then Uzbekistan as, as capital, um, Tashbent. Then Estonia as Tallinn. Then Georgia is Tbilisi, Turkmenistan is Ashgabat, Latvia is Riga, Moldova, Chisinau, Armenia, Yerevan, and Azerbaijan, Baku. Congratulations, Niels. This is some uh, flex uh, right here. We also have here the award for you, a wow. for uh, and the great prize will come your way by uh, winning the fourth round using zero lifelines while you had five. What was your uh, ID behind that? I, well, you could use them, but that's that's the smart play. That's the, that's the play, well, if you want to win, but, well, you will definitely win, but I like to live a, bit, a little bit risky in my life. <laughs> because, well, yeah, it's just for the fun and for the flex. And this was on the edge, but luckily for you on the right side of the edge. So now back to the viewer question. Uh, the answer to the viewers question today was Corleonesi clan. So congratulations to you that got it right and a uh, prize will come your way. This was Smarter by the Second. Thank you all for watching and hopefully to next time.